This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. The last project video that I did was this dishcloth, and this is a worsted weight yarn that I used. I used Lily Sugar and Cream, but this could also be made with Lion Brand Kitchen Cotton. And you can see this is really quite thick. Now I'm going to do the same kind of project, in fact a very, very similar dishcloth, except that I'm going to use a sport weight cotton. This is a sport weight cotton that I found at Hobby Lobby the other day, and it's 100% cotton. It's not mercerized, but I liked the hand of it. It has a silkier feel than many of the cottons that are on the market. You do not want to knit this straight out of the skein. Instead of trying to work from a skein, wind the yarn into a center pull ball, like this blue one, on a machine knitter's yarn winder. This is a close-up of the yarn wrapper, and I want to get in really close so that if you have to substitute, you'll have a sense of the gauge labeling that you'll find on a yarn wrapper for a similar yarn. Here's a shot of that yarn wrapper. It's 100% cotton. They're suggesting a 5 millimeter U.S. size 8 knitting needle. It's 3.5 ounces, and it is 180 yards, or 165 meters. Just the ounces and yards give you a really good idea of how thick the yarn is, because this is a, a dense 100% cotton. If you followed my videos, you know that this little symbol right here is a key symbol if you're trying to get exactly the right yarn. This one's very difficult to read. It's white letters on a turquoise background, but what it says below the cross knitting needles is 18S, that's 18 stitches, in a 10 centimeter or 4 inch square, and it also says 23R on the side, 23 rows in a 10 centimeter square. If you can get something very close to this, you've got a good substitute for this yarn. These are dishcloths. They don't all have to be exactly the same size. Here's the needle arrangement for this little project. There are 25 needles on the main bed from 12 left to 13 right. There are 24 needles on the river set at half pitch so that when they come up, they come up in between the main bed needles, and they are from 12 left to 12 right. I'm set for my zigzag row. Both carriages are set plain and on the tightest tension, which is tighter than zero, and the yarn is threaded. It's hanging between the beds and has a clothespin on it, like I almost always do. I knit the zigzag row from right to left. I hang the comb and then I'll hang the weight. The carriages are set for the circular cast on. The left part button on the main bed and tension one on the main carriage and then the right part slider on the river and tension one on the river. Then I knit three rows to do the circular cast on. For this pattern, I really do not want my end needles to tuck, so I'm having the end needles be on the river bed, so I'm doing a E-wrap cast on on the right end before this next row. Row counter needs set to zero. Both carriages are set for plain knitting and tension three, and I have brought the carriages outside the turn mark so I can select needles on this first row of double bed knitting. My pattern is set on row one and ready to go. My pattern is just the same as the one I used for the honeycomb dishcloth with the worsted weight yarn, except that it is not double width. There is more information at the blog. I knit one row from right to left and the machine will select needles. On the left side of the knitting, I also want the end needle to be on the river. I had it on the main bed to make it easy to cast on, but I need it to be on the river so that the end needle never does a tuck 
stitch. So I go ahead and e-wrap that. I set the carriage to tuck in both directions on the main bed only by depressing the two tuck buttons on the main bed. And now I just knit to row counter number 50. As you work with the first few rows at least, make sure that these end needles on the left and right have only one hook on them and that they're knitting off okay. Sometimes it's necessary to tug the needle down a little and make sure that that knits off. Once I have my 50 rows on, it's time to do the preparation for the loop through a loop bind off done away from the knitting machine. So I'm going to knit one row loosely. I cancel the touch button on the carriage. It's important that this be set for plain knitting for this row. Then I loosen the main bed carriage to the loosest tension possible and I also loosen the river carriage up to the loosest tension possible. Then I knit one row from right to left. Now I need to knit with waist yarn, so to thread the machine I just tied the waist yarn with a knot and then I grab a latch tool and I grab the yarn between the beds and I just pull this through until the waist yarn is all the way threaded and then I'll use my trusty clothespin to hold that down. I like to keep my hands free as much as possible. To do the circular rows of waist yarn, I set for the same circular knitting I did for the cast on. The river part slide goes up, the left part button goes in on the main bed. Of course I had canceled the tuck stitch earlier. Then I like to roll this back down to a smaller tension. I'm going to go all the way back down to tension 3. I don't want such big loops that it all unravels. To get 10 complete rounds of waist yarn, I have to push back and forth 20 times. After the 20 rounds are done, I just cut the yarn so the carriage is not threaded, go back and forth and catch the knitting below the machine. Here's my dishcloth. It still needs cast off, but I just wish that there was a way to convey in a video how nice and soft this yarn knitted up. I really am pleased with it. Here's that loop through a loop bind off worked in my lap. I'm just going to pull this sideways, make the waist yarn a little bit longer, and then this end is the end that has the strings. So I start at the opposite end and I like to open it out and see the end stitch. Now the very most rightmost stitch is this stitch. So I'll fold that under and get my hook in that. And then what I do is I just catch the next loop, bring it through, catch the next loop, bring it through, and I just work across that way. This is a quick easy edge for a small project like this. And I'll come back on camera when I get close to the other end. Finally, arrive at the last stitch. I just pull it through and then I poke the latch tool down in between the knitting and I find the yarn end and I'm going to pull that through. So that completes the cast off. Now I'm going to pull away the waist yarn and when that's unraveled I'll have my finished edge. Here it is. Here's that cast off edge and the whole dishcloth is finished. And here's how big it is compared to my hand.